A listener to this webpage writes, Does Evan Doorbell have any Southern California tapes? Oh, yes. First of all, we were very thorough in recording the Long Distance Network, and so calling into Southern California is included there. But I also have tapes recorded from Southern California by Ben Decibel on a number of trips he made there in the 1974 through 78 period. When I think of Southern California, the first thing that comes to mind are all the joke lines. The line, are you ready? The line at the bank was so long today. How, How long, long was it? Yeah, was it? You've tried other dishwasher detergents. Now try new improved Spotaway. Certainly. <laughs> I said try it, Mrs. Gibson, not taste it. <laughs> oh, bruh. And now, flute pauses for this brief word. Microscope. I said a brief word, not a long word. Oh. This is ZZZ, ZZZ, the last listing in the Los Angeles telephone directory. You can contact us at Post Office Box 64472, Los Angeles. I don't know what it was about that place, whether it was creativity or just the fact that extra phone lines were cheap. But there was no place like Southern California for people having extra phone lines in their house and running interesting recordings on them. Anyway, let's start relatively tame with some phone sounds recorded from a crossbar 5 in Van Nuys. A lot of the valley basically sounds like this. <clears throat> like Maryland, lots of crossbar 5 with that kind of ring. But Van Nuys also had a step, I'm happy to say. Too bad Ben didn't get a tape of that step because Barry from Baltimore, with whom Ben stayed, just had to have crossbar 5 with its touch tone and its fast call completion. Boy, I tell you, some people will just sell their soul to some high-tech thing instead of getting their fingers dirty on the real technology. I would never sell my soul like that. But anyway, we do have here a tape of the Van Nuys Crossbar 5. What? Anyway, this is from a trip to Southern California that Ben took in summer 1974. One of the innocent years when Ben and I were still playing with the phone rather than recording it for a preservation project in earnest. In other words, we were still having fun with the phone in these days. This tape begins with some answering machine messages left on Barry's machine while Ben was on the way. I'm going to bleep Barry's last name, since I don't know if he wants his name associated with this kind of a web page. But in any event, I think from this tape you can get a sense of the fun we used to have on the phones. And still being teenagers with those underdeveloped frontal lobes, we weren't afraid to bring certain devices to payphones. Not in a present. Please leave your name and number and the time of day after the tone, and he will call you later. Goodbye. I'm standing here in this hay. Well, never mind. Anyway, I don't know what. All I can say is. Yeah, I know who I am. 
think it's some kind of recording. Can you believe all those cheeps when people hang up? That was what long distance calls ending sounded like. And coincidentally, when Ben called imitating David Glass, look how many cheeps there were when he hung up. You know, for a while I lived in a small rural community in Virginia, and when I would call back home to New York just dialing the phone normally, three cheeps is what they would hear when I hung up. Meanwhile, what I would hear when I picked up the phone in that rural place was... <laughs> rural phone service. The only thing about the 1970s network that I don't miss at all. It was awful. Hummy lines. Tone plants that sound like crap and you were three or four cheeps away from most long distance points, which made a really second class connection, which you could only access after dialing the number and then waiting for an operator to manually key your number in because there was no automatic number identification. But I digress when I hear four cheeps in a row. Back to Southern California. The first thing you hear on this recording is the sound of Barry's line when the phone is hung up. He's obviously not far from the central office because there's not a lot of ground hum and there are a lot of central office oriented whines on the line. When he does pick up, the first thing Ben calls is the ringback circuit. On a crossbar 5, the ringback circuit is reached by dialing a unique three digit code associated with your prefix, followed by your own last four digits. This not only accesses ringback but verifies that your incoming number really is working. You get a dial tone which has a touch tone test feature which Ben uses. Then he flashes, which makes it switch to high tone and sets it up to ring the phone when he hangs up. the last four digits. In other cases, uh, other types of offices, it could be 252, 250, or 253. I'll dial um, 253 to get the uh, reorder. This was before directory assistance charging in California. In fact, they hadn't even yet put the recording on that begged you to first look it up in the book. Before DA charging, there was a phenomenon very common called operator roulette, which you just heard the beginning of. Basically, if you called 411 and you flashed, the trunk would reset and ring another operator. Help you? 
directory for... Directory. Director, assistant. May help you. Directory. 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 Hello. What's that? Directory system. Hello, may I help you? Operator, we're testing. Please release. Directory. Directory. The old code for directory assistance was 113 and repair was 114. Those codes were gone by 1974, but a vestige of the old format for the service code remains in that they still use the code 110 for the number readback device. It doesn't announce the number to Ben. Instead, it plays it on a speaker in the central office and Ben just hears a series of clicks. By this time in 1974, L.A. had just been through a major change. Previously, dialing one first, for any purpose, was unheard of. Even the step offices could make long-distance calls without dialing an initial one. But in 73, they decided they were going to use prefixes that were potential area codes in the local L.A. area. The first one of these was the 613 prefix in the 213 area. To accommodate that change, all the offices in L.A. had to use the initial digit one not as an indicator of a toll call, but an indicator of an area code being dialed. Needless to say, there were recordings to help customers get it right. a local busy, then a ringing number. The number here is 213-786, crossbar 5. Next is a call to the charge test. It starts by flashing off and on hook with a beep. And if you hang up before the first seven beeps have completed, you're not supposed to be charged for that because it wasn't off hook long enough. Stay on past seven or eight beeps, however, and you should be charged. This test line was very popular with Pacific Telephone, while New York barely, if ever, used them. Pacific Tel also used this for route verification purposes to make sure you were going to the right place. To do that, they assigned the phone number as prefix plus the digit 1 plus the prefix again. So the local charge test here is on 
a little wow, wow, and flutter in that tone. And actually, that was not a result of the tape recorder. That was actually the tone plant itself. That rotating device in the basement occasionally would get that way. In 1974, Los Angeles did not have AIS, automatic intercept. It was still on the old centralized intercept system. After three times, this goes to the operator. This is a recording. What number did you dial? Yes, uh, 997-5222. Uh, 997-5222. There's no referral for that number. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sure somebody hearing this remembers that recording. When L.A. finally did get AIS in the late 70s, it had Weathercron announcements, of course. You know, six, eight, three. Anyway, next is a call to Rick Burbank's answering machine, a freak famous for saying hello party on conferences. With that step crosstalk, you know we're not in Maryland. L.A. was a place that had a lot of bell system step, and Rick, wisely, assuming he had a choice, chose a step line. Looks like Rick has a timed, rather than VOX, voice-operated recording system here, so let's get to the hang-up. Now let's see how long Ben can hold up Rick's line before he gets automatically cut off. And we'll listen to crosstalk in the meantime. Sixteen seconds before he was cut off automatically. It's usually twenty seconds from a crossbar five, but the relays that time that are thermal, so, you know, they're not that precise. One thing L.A. didn't have was number one crossbar, which tended to have a very long holding time. You could hold up lines for three or four minutes from those, but L.A. didn't have any. Pause for a moment and call Z on 836-5566. One of the greatest joke lines in the world. Nobody calls that number anymore. It's always busy. Next is the infamous Suzanne. I'll let the recording speak for itself. Five 
provided free. This message plays twice. Hello, I'm Suzanne. If you desire to be loved more by someone who really cares, you are welcome to watch her take part in a beautiful experience in man, woman, love. And do anything you want that's loving in a group or private, freely, legitimately. No one ever does anything they don't want. Come to the unique Love Playhouse on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday afternoon at 1, or any evening, seven nights a week at 8. We begin at 1.30 and at 8.30. Let's explore the art of loving together through the exciting Masters and Johnson techniques. We're in Hollywood, just south of Sunset Boulevard, half a block east of Highland Avenue, 1428 McCadden, 1428 MCCADBEN. For a beautiful experience you will never forget, let me show you how to get all the love you want, no matter who you are. And it's only five or ten dollars. Girls are invited free. This message plays twice. Hello, I'm Suzanne. I don't think we're in Maryland anymore, Toto. Another unique thing about L.A. is that people will use just about anything as a meeting place, including recordings that play over and over and over and give you just a second to shout your number. Here Ben calls a vacant level recording in a step where people are doing just that. again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dial. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dial. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to... Here's another example of a recording people are talking in between. The crossbar tandem that this call goes through is dial pulsing the last five digits, and you can hear the recording in the background during the last three. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry. In 1974, there were still parts of L.A. where you could get a recording like this.
911 is not available in your community. Please dial the emergency agency directly or dial our operator for assistance. This is a recording. If you did dial zero for assistance, you went to an operator at an old-fashioned cord board. Operator. Operator. Excuse me, I reached you by mistake. Okay. You might have noticed the system waited to see if he was going to dial a phone number after that zero. But if you did, you just got the local recording. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or ask your operator for assistance. This is the recording. Hmm, with that very long silence in between repeats of the recording, that sounds like a potential conference. The reason it probably didn't get going as a conference is that only the Crossbar 5 customers in Van Nuys could get it. That's not a big enough group of potential users to get the ball rolling without somebody really working at it. When you dialed a digit consisting of 11 pulses in a Crossbar 5, you'd go to the permanent signal holding trunk where dial tones would time out to. The first time he tries to do this, he gets the operator by mistake. Issue a mistake. Here are a few long-distance calls from Van Nuys. This goes out on the Sherman Oaks 4A, whose recording ID is 21315. Going out on a 4A, you don't hear any MF tones, unfortunately, so it's not that interesting a sound, but this is what long-distance calls sounded like from a lot of places in the 1970s. Another thing he gets is a recording from VZ Tandem Number 2, back when the classic West Street Lady was on, the lady who had that strangely charming New York accent. And on this call, he literally whistles off a trunk, which is a classic phone freak sound. are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. 2127. I'm sorry. Stop. VZ Tandem 2 is not a long-distance tandem, and that means we went through something else to get there. Now that he's whistled off this trunk, it's going to time out to the recording from whatever 4A we went through. It'll be another New York 4A. We'll see which one it is. I'm 
sorry. Your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. 21249. I'm sorry. 21249, that's New York 6, installed in 1972, handled a big part of Manhattan. Here he gets recordings from two other New York City forays. Area code 900 was hardly ever used in the 1970s, but it was sitting there waiting in case of a mass calling event. So they had it all set up and ready to go, and all you'd ever get was a recording from a 4A, usually a circuit's busy recording. Let's see where it goes from Van Nuys. to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording, 2132. I'm sorry. That's LA-2, the main long distance 4A for Los Angeles. Actually, Van Nuys sent it to Sherman Oaks, which then sent it downtown. The actual Sherman Oaks 4A's recording is next. Sherman Oaks was a very familiar landmark because of the way the lady liked to announce the recording ID at the end. It was uh, unusually gleeful, actually. She uh, did it this time. Two, one, three, one, five. And she was doing it a few years ago. Two, one, three, one, five. Still having a good time back then, I see. And back in 1972. Two, one, three, one, five. Let's see how the Sherman Oaks lady handled it when there was a terrible natural disaster in South Dakota. Now, surely, back in June 72 when that happened, she must have toned it down a little bit. Let's see. Due to heavy flooding in western South Dakota, your calls cannot be completed at this time. Place emergency calls with your operator. This is a recording, 21315. Okay, for a disaster, she doesn't tone it down. Well, let's try something closer to home. Sherman Oaks lady. How would you do the recording if a 7.1 hit L.A. and your husband was killed? This is a recording. 2131213121315. All right, that's it. Somebody, please show us the right way to do a disaster recording. I'm sorry. Due to the flood disaster in western South Dakota, your call cannot be completed at this time. Oh, sorry. I'll try later. Now, I'm just going to ask y'all one more time. Let's try to do the recording. No weird people, no hype. 
Now try it, somebody. I'm sorry. Due to having calls. Oh, God. Forget it. Forget it. Never mind. your call at this time. This is a recording. 2152. Well, no hype there. Anyway, folks, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I'm the recording. You're the... I said I'm so... Got me. These people would die if they knew we were paying this much attention to the recordings, and they had no idea that they were celebrities to the phone freaks. But they were because they were what gave the individual 4A crossbar switches a personality. Unlike crossbar ones and panels, 4A crossbar switches pretty much sounded alike in their switching function. The basic sound they made was this. That's right, tick. And so it was the recording, plus the ring you might hear if you called the test board, that made the 4As different one from another. And the same people did the recordings through the many years that we were working with the old network. For example, the downtown L.A. lady, which you heard before... I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. ...was around during the South Dakota flood. Due to heavy being in western South Dakota, your call cannot be completed at this time. Emergency calls can be placed through your operator. This is a recording, 2134. Finally, and by the way, 2134 is the other foray in the downtown building. It's me again. Yeah. Stephanie, why don't you hold in? I want to talk to you. Oh, I know where you are. You're having fun with Lanny. Where are you? God damn it, would you get home already? You can't stand waiting. N213786, home station. Hmm, sounds like this is more than just a phone trip. Anyway, that's it for the switching sounds recorded at the Van Nuys home phone, but there are some more tapes from that phone of various and sundry things, which I'll put in part two, plus some recordings of a coin phone, which include CoinZone, a way the phone company used to handle calls across zones within a metro area without engaging the equipment for long distance. It was kind of efficient because it used the local cord board operator who would plug in and uh, ask for the additional deposit. 